YouTube now. My voice is too low. Uh, yes, I'm using the wrong speakers. I'm using the wrong microphone. Uh, there we go. Is it better now? I'm using the microphone on my headphones. Okay. Right. I think we're good to go. <clears throat> Welcome everyone and wassalam wa marhaban um, to another class inshallah ta'ala um, let me share my screen my mouse I think a bit funny Tay. today we're going to start Year two, inshallah, uh, family, al usra, it's called. And we'll start off with a quick overview, inshallah ta'ala, then we'll go over the dialogues. And then, bin al kareem, we will explain some of the grammar concepts, inshallah. So, today's session is about one hour, inshallah, slightly less. And then, starting from 10 15, we're going to go to the workshops, inshallah. And as soon as I finish the live stream, I'll send the links to the workshops in the Telegram groups, inshallah. So, don't worry about that. The uh, Zoom meeting links will be sent as soon as the uh, the general lecture is over, inshallah. Okay. Uh, Najil, if there are any uh, important questions or anything, just unmute yourself and let me know, inshallah. I won't be looking at the chat. Okay. Thank you, inshallah. Right. Okay. So uh, this unit's overview, then. Like always, what are we going to learn? That's the first question. What will we learn? Okay, one minute. It's acting a bit funny. Oh, I've got a problem with my mouse today. Use the trackpad. Okay. Okay, what are we going to learn this week? Um, Then, as you know, the theme for this week is family, al-usra. Actually, I didn't even post the uh, YouTube link, did I, on uh, on the channel? Let me do that. Okay. Okay, so this unit, uh, the unit for this week is called Al-Usra. Uh, Al-Usra in Arabic means family. And what we're going to learn about, inshallah ta'ala, is how to introduce family members and their roles, okay, or their occupations if you like, as well, or the thing they, things they do at home. Uh, also, how to ask about another person's family, okay? And also, how to ask about something or someone's whereabouts okay so that's the theme those are the things we're gonna learn these are the day-to-day -day scenarios that you always come across in your daily lives so when you find yourself in that kind of scenario with an Arabic language speaker you'll be able to introduce your family and also ask about his family okay obviously it makes sense that this is the second unit first unit is about yourself second unit is about the most important people in your life which are your family okay in terms of vocabulary, then in terms of core vocabulary, then there are three categories, generally speaking. We're going to learn uh, names of family members, okay? And we're also going to learn the names of some places in the home and some places outside, okay? So a few locations, okay? Before, last time we learned about countries, right? Now we're just going, going a bit narrower now, okay? Inside your house, the different rooms in your house, what are they called? Places that you go to when you leave your house, some places. 
and also some household objects things at home uh, we're also going to mention those how to find them how to ask about them uh, this is what the vocabulary of the theme is about the supplementary vocabulary is counting from five to ten okay uh, sorry six to ten we've done one to five last time and when it comes to the theme vocabulary um and all of these are on quizlet like i've shown you last time then the themes that are relative to this week's unit is theme six houseware so you can basically increase your vocabulary by going to the theme vocabulary okay so houseware so you learn about a few objects but if you want to learn more go to theme six houseware and uh, the family tree as well which is very much related to today's unit you'll find that in theme 14 okay in terms of grammar then uh, we're going to be learning about uh, demonstrative pronouns um sorry we've done demonstrative pro pronouns already okay uh, we're going to recap it interrogative words we're going to also learn a few extra personal pronouns so interrogative words we have three so far we're going to learn the fourth one the asmaul istifham those words used to ask questions and in terms of personal pronouns then we're going to add another two inshallah in this session and we're also going to start learning about verbs okay so in this unit you're going to see the first verb inshallah so what are verbs and what's the relation between verbs and nouns and these sort of things generally speaking categories of speech we are going to cover that inshallah towards the end when we talk about the grammar the projected learning outcomes for this week very quickly you're going to learn 30 new core vocabulary if you increase by doing the supplementary vocabulary it be 35 and you can also add the theme vocabulary to that but the minimum that's expected from you is to know these 30 words in terms of grammar then you're going to learn how to apply the interactive words the new ones we're going to learn and the demonstrative pronouns and the extra personal pronouns inshallah and you'll also learn about verbs as well I forgot to add that over here in terms of comprehension then you'll be able to, you're going to develop your ability to comprehend written and spoken arabic in your day-to-day -day interactions with speakers of the language in what situation when talking about your own and their families okay in terms of pronunciation this week's letters are ain and hamza something english speakers struggle with a lot too much okay as a matter of fact someone sent me a message today one of the students asking when the letter when the lessons will start okay yeah. and, um, and the student wrote meta tabda at ders okay obviously the student meant the tabda tabda bada yabda means to start but uh, the student wrote meta tabda at ders with a ain why because in the english language there is no ain this sound is foreign to you as an english speaker unless you have some background in learning Arabic okay so that's why it's very difficult to differentiate between the two so this week is really really important that you pay much attention to the sound recognition exercises inshallah ta'ala okay there's this uh, funny story Allah alam I don't know about his authenticity but they say that an individual was uh, undergoing an interview at Jamia al Islami, the Islamic University in Medina and the interviewer asked him هل تعرف المبتدأ والخبر؟ المبتدأ is a subject, خبر is predicate. These are uh, grammatical terms, مبتدأ and خبر. We'll cover that later, إن شاء الله. So he asked him, do you know المبتدأ والخبر؟ مبتدأ with a همزة at the end. And then this guy said, أنا لا أعرف مبتدأ. أنا عارف مبتدع. Okay, so he thought he's saying عين. So he's like, I don't know what مبتدأ is, but I do know what مبتدع is. Okay. But the guy's not talking about bid'ah, he's not talking about mubtadi'ah. He's saying mubtada' with a hamza at the end. Um, but he he heard the hamza to be the same as the ain. So he's like, la arif al mubtada' a'rif mubtadi'ah. Okay, so that's just a funny story. Allah knows best the authenticity of it. Um, then we have the speaking skills. Then inshallah you'll be able to initiate conversations with uh, confidence by introducing your family members and their roles in the house asking about another person's family members and asking about something or someone's whereabouts this is generally the overview and these are the learning objectives and I always share this at the beginning of the lecture so that you know exactly where you're working towards and inshallah ta'ala where you should be at the end of this at the end of next week okay we talked about the difference between learning objectives and learning outcomes these are the objectives this is what we're planning that you get to do but the learning outcomes uh, we'll, we'll see inshallah towards the end of next week the pre-unit assignments, you've done it. Reading fluency, make sure you read it. The dialogues, all of you should be fluent readers by now. 
Uh, there's a comprehension assessment of the dialogue we're going to cover today, some vocabulary practice and vocabulary assessment on Quizlet. And if I have a look at that, the Quizlet exercise, um, then these are the words that you found the most difficult. Okay? If we look at your answers, okay? 14 of you were making a mistake on Ibnu, which means son. Yaqra'u, uh, Ab, Hamam. So these are the words that you generally found difficult. These ones towards the end are the ones that everybody found easy. Adhan, makes sense. Why everyone knows that word. Fajr, makes sense. Masjid, makes sense. Musalla, Ghurfa, and, and, and Jadda. These words were easy. Okay? Time. Uh, so again, we can uh, tailor instruction according to that and make sure that we find some very difficult words that we can explain it better, inshallah. So, uh, first thing we're going to do, inshallah, is we're going to go over the dialogues, inshallah ta'ala. Um, are there any questions so far? Before we listen to the dialogues? Type. All right, let's start. Okay. Okay, so we're going to listen to it first and then after that I'll explain, inshallah. I generally speaking don't translate sentence by sentence. Okay? This sort of course is not for translation, right? Instead, what I do is I explain the grammar concepts and I expect you to memorize the vocabulary, which means you should then be able to understand the sentence. And we'll test that towards the end of the lecture, inshallah. We'll see if your comprehension has increased after I explain the grammar concepts, inshallah. Type. This is the first one. Um, I suppose you can't hear it, huh? One second. Share sound. How can I should be able to hear it? Can you hear it now? Nigel, is that, yes, is that, that heard? We can hear. We can hear. Okay, good. Okay, let's listen to the first dialogue, inshallah. Okay, bismillah. Al-Wahda al-Thaniya. Al-Usra. Al-Dars al-Ashir. Al-Hiwar al-Awwal. Unzur wa istami'a. حوار بين علي وأخيه عمار السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام هذه صورة أسرتي ما شاء الله من هذا؟ هذا والدي عدنان وهو مهندس ومن هذه؟ هذه والدتي سعيدة وهي طبيبة ومن هذا؟ هذا أخي عيسى وهو طالب ومن هذه؟ هذه أختي عبلة وهي معلمة وهذا جدي وهذه جدتي ما شاء الله والآن جاء دورك انظر واستمع وأعد حوار بين علي وأخيه عمار السلام He wants you to practice reading it by, by yourself now which inshallah all of you have done during the pre-assignment assessments, inshallah. So here we have a, a conversation between Ali and his brother Ammar. Okay. Um, and his friend Ammar, I suppose, makes more sense. He said his brother Ammar, but that wouldn't make sense, would it? I don't think the brother would be asking about his family members. Anyway, um, so we have, this is a family tree. This is a family tree. And as you can see, these are the relationships between each. Ukht and Akh, Jad, Jadda, Ab and Um. Okay? Um, so he's basically saying to him, Ali is saying, Hadi Surah to Usrati, there's a picture of my family. He says, MashaAllah, Man Hada. And he's asking about every single one. So, Man Hada, that's something new we're learning now. Man. Who? Who is this? Okay? That's when it comes to the masculine. When he's asking about a female, he says, Man Hadi. And all of you know the difference in the by now between Hada and Hadi. Okay, so he says, هذا والدي 
Adnan, who are Muhandis. There's nothing new here. Um, this wow over here might be new. The wa, wa means end. Pretty straightforward. So, هذا والدي, this is my father Adnan, who are Muhandis, and he is an engineer. And he keeps on asking about every single person within this uh, family tree, if you like. So, what do you learn from this? You learn from this that if you want to ask about someone, you say man. Man هذا, man هذه. And then as an answer, you say هذا أبي. هذه والدتي and so on and so forth okay uh, طيب that's the first one inshallah the vocabulary will do a quick uh, competition if you like at the end when we cover all three dialogues inshallah and we'll also do a quick grammar competition as well bismillah so let's go on to the next one the next dialogue الوحدة الثانية الأسرة الدرس الحادي عشر الحوار الثاني انظر واستمع هل هذه شجرة؟ نعم هذه أسرة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم هذا والده عبد الله وهذه والدته آمنة وهذا جده عبد المطلب وهذا عمه العباس وهذا عمه حمزة Okay, so there seems to be a problem with the audio. And I think most, a lot of you have mentioned that as well in the pre-assignment, pre-assessment, uh, if you like assignments. There's not much I can do about that. The audio has got short. Um, but... Um, I'll read out what's what's left. It says, وهذا عمه العباس وهذا عمه حمزة وهذا عمه أبو طالب وهذه عمته صفية وهذا ابنه القاسم وهذا ابنه عبد الله وهذا ابنه إبراهيم وهذا ابنته فاطمة وهذا ابنته رقية وهذا ابنته زينب وهذا ابنته أم كلثوم. طيب. First thing that we notice here is that it's a family tree of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you know I'm very happy or proud if you like that they put this here in this particular uh, unit okay and that goes to um, prove what we've mentioned earlier which is that this particular series he has a very Islamic has an Islamic identity okay and what better than getting to know the family tree of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so you don't just benefit Arabic here you also get to benefit a bit of the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so the main difference between this and the previous what is it what's the main difference between this dialogue and the previous one uh, apart from this one being about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the main difference grammatically is that the first one the person was talking about his own family okay Walidi, Abi, you know the Ya, Ya al Mutakallim we've done last week. This is a pronoun, the attached pronoun which you use to ascribe something to yourself. Now, here we have another new pronoun we haven't done before, which is when you're ascribing something to someone else. Okay, specifically when someone is male in this particular example. Okay, so the first dialogue is about introducing your own family. Now you're introducing someone else's family. Okay. So imagine you go and you meet someone, Arabic speaker, and you talk about your family, هذا ibni, هذا ibnati, whatever. And then he asks you, من هذا? Maybe you have your brother's family as well. Okay? Then you say, this is my brother, هذا أخي, Yusuf. And you mention what he does. And then you want to mention, you know, you want to introduce his children. So how would you do that? You can't say, هذا ولدي. It's not your, it's not your son. Yes? هذا uh, ibni. Okay, that's then when you would use these pronouns. Hada ibnu. So now I'm introducing my brother's children or my brother's family. Okay, so that's the main difference here. Introducing your own family, the first dialogue. Introducing someone else's family in this dialogue. Okay? Type. Um, so the main, the new thing that we learn is that uh, ha at the end, which is used to ascribe some, uh, something to someone else. And we'll cover more on that later, inshallah. For the rest, uh, most of the dialogue are proper nouns. Okay? names of individuals and there's nothing else really that is new over here uh, apart from this here when it says Usratur Rasul 
the Prophet's family. This is something we call mudaf mudaf ilayh, which we've been doing so far with the pronouns, but here you have two nouns that are ascribed to each other. That's also a, a concept which we're not going to cover in this unit, uh, uh, but something we're going to cover inshallah. We're not going to cover it today, but hopefully we're going to cover it on Tuesday inshallah. Because generally speaking, the way we do things is we focus on the grammar concepts that are within the book, that the book focuses on in today's lecture. And Tuesday's lecture, we add some grammar concepts that are related to it, inshallah. Okay? So let's go to the final and third dialogue and explain Al that. Al-Wahda Al-Usra Al-Dars Al-Thani Ashar Al-Hiwar Al-Thalith Unzur Wastamah هذا أذان الفجر الله أكبر الله أكبر أين الأولاد؟ سعد في الحمام يتوضأ وأين سعيد؟ سعيد في الغرفة يقرأ القرآن وأين سعيدة؟ سعيدة في المصلى تصلي أين المعطف يا سعد؟ هذا هو المعطف يا والدي وأين النظارة؟ هذه هي النظارة يا والدي هيا بنا إلى المسجد هيا بنا والآن جاء دورك انظر واستب okay, um, In this one, this particular dialogue Again, same thing applies again Allah Akbar A very religious, beautiful religious identity And subhanallah يعني what a blessed family. <laughs> you know, Sa'ad is making wudu. Uh, Sa'id is reading Quran in the room. Sa'ida is praying in the musalla. You know, they're going to go to the masjid together. All of this is happening when? Salat al Fajr. So, subhanAllah, it's not just it's a religious identity, it's just that it's also, you know, very encouraging. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of our families righteous uh, as has been portrayed in this particular dialogue. Okay? The whole family up and running around Fajr time, uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so we have the main thing again. What's the main thing in this dialogue? Because every dialogue has a specific uh, focus, if you like. Okay, so the main focus in this particular dialogue is number one, it has introduced verbs. Okay, it has introduced verbs. We'll talk about that later. Okay, and also um, asking about something's whereabouts. Okay, we know that we've done last unit. Min aina anta? Where are you from? Okay, that's not asking about your whereabouts. Asking about where you're from, sah? But imagine you're looking for something. Okay, or you're looking for someone. Then you would use that word aina. You wouldn't add the min. If some of you had the impression that min aina is one one phrase, then no. Or if it's one, if it's like one word, no. Min aina are two separate words. Okay, min means from. Aina means where. So this word aina. You can use it to ask about something or someone's whereabouts. No differentiation there between if it's a human or an object or an animal, no difference. Aina an nazara where are my glasses or where are the glasses? Or Aina Sa'ad, where is Sa'ad? Okay? So if you want to ask about someone, someone's whereabouts or something that you've lost or something you're looking for, you would use this word Aina. Uh, these are the main, this is the main thing we learn in this particular dialogue. There's nothing really new here beyond that, beyond the uh, verb and beyond the aina. Um, we've done that before. One thing here that you would notice is the word ya. Ya, ya walidi. We all know what that means. Ya Allah, oh Allah. So this is harful uh, nida, is a, is, a, is, a, is a particle or a word that we use to call upon or to call someone. Okay, to call someone. Mumtaz, are there any questions? Before we do some uh, vocabulary practice. Ah, why are the hada and the huwa together in the same sentence? That's a very good question. <laughs> it's a very good question, which we're going to cover next week, inshallah, when we start talking about basic sentence structure. So Arabic language, sentences have a basic structure. Okay, so that would explain why we have had and huwa together. Okay. Uh, we'll explain that inshallah next lesson okay for now you can just you can just ignore who okay for now you can ignore who who is there for a reason 
which we'll explain next lesson. But هذا هو والدي is the same as هذا والدي. Okay. Grammatically speaking, there is a difference, but we'll cover that later. Okay. Any other questions? So that's a good question, which I'm going to save. Why are the هذا and the what together? Are there any other questions? Generally speaking, my dear brothers and sisters, when you're doing the pre-unit assignments, right? I expect you to um, try and figure everything out yourself and wherever you get stuck to submit questions before class. Okay? That's what the pre-unit assignments are for. It's about you doing a bit of work before I go and explain. Okay? So please, going forward, maybe you had no questions. Still, it's this slow start. Things are still relatively easy. Okay? But as we go forward definitely you're going to find things that are difficult when you do ask uh, the question inshallah ta'ala ask the question can we use google translate i would advise not to number one is highly inaccurate number one and number two i want you to develop the ability to understand the language through the language okay and using a translation would be a shortcut if you like which might help your present self but you would be short selling your future self Okay, whereas if you completely forego translations, I could give you a translation of the dialogue. I have it. It's ready. I've got it in a word format. I can send it to all of you. Hey, look, this is the dialogue. This is the translation. But I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want you to understand these dialogues in, in English. I want you to understand them in Arabic. That's why in order to understand these dialogues in Arabic, you only need two things. That's it. All you need is know the vocabulary, the words themselves. Number one. And number two, you need to know the grammar structures within the dialogue. And the good thing about this series, yes, is that they don't just write a dialogue and put any any words there, like some of the uh, curriculums they do. They'll write anything. Yes? No. In this particular series, Medina Book is also the same in that regard. They are very careful in terms of what grammar concepts are present within the dialogue at this stage. They make sure they build on top of it. So for example, the uh, Imam books, Jama'at al-Imam, the books that they have, they don't have this. In the first dialogue, if you like, there's like 20 different grammar concepts, okay? But this series is not like that. The grammar concepts, not just are they carefully chosen, but they are also very limited so that you can build your way up okay type so we're gonna avoid the translating uh, side of things um, okay so the vocabulary if you have that inshallah after I explain the grammar concepts beyond that point inshallah you should be able to understand the, the, the whole dialogue in Arabic inshallah I was gonna say something there but I lost my train of thought um, let's do um, Let's do a, a quick vocabulary competition. Okay, so we're going to use Quizlet for that. You can choose to put your own name. Um, or you can uh, you can put your own name. Or you can just put whatever name that you like. Okay, but it's a competition, which means some of you are going to win. Some of you are going to lose. Okay, actually there's only one winner in this particular competition. So let's, let's do that, inshallah. Let me... Uh, navigate so the first competition is on the core vocabulary and after that we'll do one on the themed vocabulary okay time so I'm gonna share a, a code with you or a link that you should use okay so let me start it first Okay, uh, if any of you have the Quizlet app, then put this code inshallah. If you don't have the app, I'm going to send you the link now that you can use. Put that code. And let me share the screen as well. You can all use, also use your barcode scanner and scan this inshallah. Okay, and those of you that want to go to their website use this link inshallah quizlet live link 
Okay. So you can join inshallah, like I said, you can use whatever name that you like. I don't mind. Let me copy the game link actually. I've got a link to the game itself. I suppose, let me post that. It might be even easier. There's a the game link. Yeah, just click that link. Forget the code. Just click that link. If you don't have the app, forget the code. If you're using the app, you use that code. If you're using the app. If you're not using the app, then just click the link that I've just sent. Okay? It'll take you there straight away. I'm going to give it a couple more uh, 20 seconds before we start, inshallah. Okay, starting now, inshallah. Ready? Create the game with 25 players. I've got 26 of you there now. Okay, should we start? Quickly type. If anyone's still trying to enter, type into the Zoom before I start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, we're gonna start. Bismillah. Good. Okay, let's start the game. There we go. It's got different uh, animal names. Can't say anybody's names. It's got just different animal names. And we can see that uh, reindeers seem to be winning. Okay, mashallah. Siberian tigers, mashallah. Who's gonna win? I wonder. Siberian tigers about to win. Okay, so who won? Uh. Siberian Tigers, mashallah. Okay. Um, Mumtaz, I hope that went good, inshallah. Followed by uh, reindeers and oxen. Mashallah. Um Aisha. Okay, Mumtaz. Uh, let's do another one. Inshallah. This one's going to be slightly different. And this is going to be on the themed vocabulary, okay? And we're going to do the one called the family tree. Um, okay, so basically you're going to find an Arabic word and you have to find where it is on the picture. Okay, I'm going to send the game link again, join this one, no different link, different link this time around. Okay, we'll give a couple of seconds, just click that link and it'll take you there. I'll send the link. Do you want the code? Sorry. The code is this the code. That's the code. 216002. In case you're using the app. Okay, I'm gonna start in five seconds. Five. Four. Yalla. Three. Two. One. How many people were we before? We got twenty five now. We got twenty six. I think we we're twenty six before. Okay, let's start. Ready? Let's go for it. Bismillah. Start the game. Somebody uh, got disconnected. Uh, I think they're back. Okay. 
someone is disconnected start okay this one as you can see this exercise is slightly different okay and it's probably more difficult so you have to like imagine what the connection is okay now imagine you can see it there but there's no translating here the previous one you might have found it easy because you're translating to to English but right now no you have to look at the arrow yes obviously the children are at the bottom grandparents are at the top you have to look at the arrow and figure out what word goes there it's much more challenging I agree uh, someone got disconnected I'm not sure if you can join try to join with the link so how much I can do about that now okay <laughs> people are dropping left right and center here <laughs> like flies <laughs> Wow, it's difficult, eh? <laughs> Allah Akbar. I cannot find the link. The link is posted here in the Zoom. I posted it a second ago. If you uh, scroll up, you'll find it. Okay, people are finding it difficult to get beyond number five. <laughs> okay. Lynx is doing good. He's on six. If Lynx makes a mistake, I'm going to cancel. We're going to stop. Okay? So I'm going to give Lynx a chance to win. He's got two more questions to answer. If Lynx makes it, fine. If Lynx drops, we're going to stop. And I'm just going to go over it and explain. Okay, seems like Lynx is stuck. Doesn't know what to choose. Okay, Lynx got up to eight. MashaAllah. One more. Ahsent, MashaAllah. Um Umar, well done. MashaAllah. Okay, good. Okay, mashallah. So, uh, yeah, that was a bit more difficult. That was a bit... Uh, uh, the game isn't working properly. Is that is that the reason why? Okay, I, th I thought because it was difficult. Let's, let's have a look at it, actually. Um, let's have a look at it. Let's say learn. Um, memorize it all. Okay, let's say memorize it all. What's your timeline? Continue. That's a bit neat. They got something called study path now. I didn't even know about it. Quizzes, mashallah, keeps on getting better, mashallah. Anyway, here, as you can see, um, it's pointing to what? It's pointing towards the grandfather. So that would be Jet. Okay, so let's see if I can get through it. If I can get through it. Oh, man. Yeah, I see what you mean. Maybe this there's a mistake over here. But it gave you the English as well, actually. So, but it doesn't give that in the uh, in the quizlet life. I agree with that. This one is pointing towards who? As you can see, it's pointing towards. Um, yeah, I think it's all about Umar, right? It revolves around Umar, I suppose. So that must be his sister. <laughs> I know, I know what you guys mean. It seems to be a bit complicated. Uh, let's see. We have Khadija pointing towards Khadija, and then we have Omar. And the question is, it's revolving around who? Relationship to who? Sorry, yeah, this is basically saying if you look at the arrow, it's pointing from this little girl to her. From the little girl to her. What would that be? Okay? So if. If Fatima is her mother, then this would be her auntie, Khala. So, correct. Anyway, it's it's a bit it's a bit challenging. I agree. I'll have a look at it as well, inshallah, outside class and make sure that it's at least working properly, inshallah, and then you can have a go at it again in your own time. Type. Uh, you can't see your screen. You couldn't see my screen? Sorry about that. No problem, inshallah. We'll, we'll do that another time. Um, continuing with our explanation, so we've done vocabulary, alhamdulillah. Right, we're gonna go, now, now we're going to get to the most important thing, which is the grammar. Okay, this is what it's all about. And um, before we start the grammar, I'm going to do a quick assessment on the previous, if you like, exercise that you've done. So again, uh, some other uh, practice as well, some more practice. Uh, Uh, 
okay let me share this shall I use name factory where the app makes up names or you want to choose your own names okay it's Maghrib here where, which, where is that I thought they already prayed Maghrib in the UK So this is the thing that I was working on that I talked to you about last time. This is just a, a quick sample, right? But these are what I call grammar. And this is what I talked about in the channel. This is one of the reasons why I didn't manage to uh, do the reports and stuff and get in touch with everyone. And it's a lot of things I fell behind on, inshallah, which we'll catch up on because I was working on this. which Because uh, I, I noticed there's a lot of uh, weakness when it comes to the grammar. So I made these kind of exercises. This is a, a sample of what I call the grammar skill building exercises. Okay, so these exercises they build specific skills in grammar, and also they are adaptive exercises, whereby the questions you get right, they won't ask you them that often anymore, but those questions you get wrong or new questions, it'll keep on revisiting them, specifically the ones that you get wrong. Okay, so let me show you how it works. So again, I'm going to share a link with you. I'm going to go over it question by question, inshallah. Um, join my quiz. Uh, so here you have the link in the chat. Use that link, inshallah. making up names as you can see and I'll see you next time if you brothers and sisters want your names there or not but for now just to be safe I chose a name factory it's making up names okay so I think last time we were 27 so I'm gonna wait for I'm gonna wait to reach 27 inshallah or close to it maybe some of you want to pray salah I'm not sure I'll give it 10 more seconds okay 10 9 8 Seven, six, five, four. Everyone there? Three, two, one. I suppose everyone is there. Anyone still we need to wait for? Okay then. Let's start. Bismillah. Okay, so all of you should have a question up. It's saying, Ismi Khalid, ana mudarrisun min. What's the answer? Pakistaniya, Pakistani, Al Pakistan, Pakistan. Ismi Khalid, ana mudarrisun min. Pakistaniya, Pakistani, Al Pakistan, or Pakistan. What's the correct answer? Okay, time's up. So yeah, the correct answer is uh, Pakistan. Okay, so four of you said Al Pakistan. So this is a good opportunity to explain names, proper nouns, generally speaking, specifically names of countries or individuals. You don't add an alif lam to it. You don't say Al Pakistan. You don't say Al Misri. You don't say Al Muhammad. You don't say Al Khalid. Okay. So Al Pakistan is wrong. The correct name is Pakistan. Pakistan, not Al Pakistan. Okay. Uh, so one, two of you said Pakistani. No, because it says Mudarrisun Min Pakistan. Pakistani is the association to Pakistan. I'm, pa I'm, I'm Pakistani, but it wouldn't have the Min in front of it. It would be Ana Mudarrisun Pakistani. It would be an adjective, right? But here Min. You have to mention the country's name, not the associate association to the country. Is that clear? Next question. Ismi Khalidun Ana Tabibun Min. Okay. 
okay it was actually meant to uh, mix up the questions okay time's almost up okay all done so what's the correct answer Sun joke spirit mashallah funny names okay so yeah so six of you still made the same mistake this is the same question as before ismi khalid ana tabibun min turkiya not turkey turkiya that's the name of the country whereas turkey is association okay right next one hope it's not the same because if it is i'm gonna jump it no, it's next. One. Let's go to another one. All these are the same, okay? I'm not going to do the same one again. Here we have a different question, a different type of question this time around, okay? It says, Ismi Khawla. No. Then I jump that one. No, sorry, sorry. This is wrong. I want to go to the next question. Um. How do I jump these questions? Okay, yeah. What do we have here? We have something, ismi khawla. Something, someone is asking a question. And the answer is ismi khawla. What's that question? Man ismuk, masmi, masmuka, or masmuki? Okay, all done. I hope I think most of you got it right. Sah? Don't let me down. Okay. Most of you got it right. Okay, most of you got it right. Anyway, we can't spend all day on this exercise. I'm gonna send you the link to this exercise. You do it in your own time. So it's got many other questions as well that are similar to this or that are different. Um covering all the different, if you like, grammar concepts that we've done. Okay, so here we have man hada something akhi. Man hada is it huwa akhi? Is it he akhi? Hadihi akhi or hada akhi? Time's up. Okay, what does he say? Okay, yeah, so most of you got it right. Man hada? No, sorry, most of you got it wrong. Man hada huwa akhi. You don't say hada akhi. We talked about this last time. Yes, hada is used to determine demonstrative pronoun. Who are we talking about? Hua is a personal pronoun. We use it to refer back to something that's already known. So when somebody also already points out and says, Man hada, who is this? It will be redundant for you to say hada akhi. Okay? Okay? Um, so if someone said to you, who is this? You'll be like, he's my brother. Okay? You're not going to point at them and be like, this is my brother. When he already said, who is this? So man hada... Huwa akhi, not hada akhi. And unbelievable, 23 of you got it wrong. <laughs> Only two of you got it right. <laughs> so as, as you can see, these sort of exercises are really needed. Okay, they're really needed. And I'm sure it comes to a surprise as well, most of you don't get it wrong. So, anyway, um, that's how these exercises are. You get to do it at your own pace, inshallah, at your own time. And inshallah ta'ala, I'll make sure I get all of them ready. And I'll share it with you, inshallah. Okay, well done. In the example given, that was how it was answered. Uh, so the book, you're trying to say the book says, Man hadha hadha akhi? I'm not sure about that. I'll check that out. Okay? Type. If that's the case, I'll, I'll check it out, inshallah. I'll check it out. But it's redundant. Okay? I'll check it out, inshallah. Type. I'll check it out. No problem. 
Okay, I made these exercises so it could be down the out of line with the book, but I'll double check on that inshallah. Type, let's go and explain the uh, grammar concepts inshallah. And it's going to be, mashallah, it's going to be quite uh, heavy today. Okay, I'm test. Just give me a second. Sorry about that, just texting the teacher. Telling them we're gonna be about 15 minutes late. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أستاذ راح نتأخر ربع ساعة إن شاء الله ها نبدأ في العاشرة ونص زين سأرسل لك الرابط قريبا بارك الله فيكم أوكي quickly fifteen minutes can explain it and then we can start the workshop بسم الله أوكي so there is something called, and I don't think we're not going to find time for Wook Lab today, unfortunately. Shall we we'll do that next time? So we have something called, dear brothers and sisters, the three parts of Arabic speech. Okay, and those of you that know it, you can write in the Zoom chat. Okay, so the Arabic language, every single word in the language, can be can be put in one of three buckets. Okay, can be put in one of three buckets. This is what we call aqsamul kalam. And it's very important that you know this. Why? Because every single part of speech has its own unique features and you need to deal with it in a specific way. So whenever you come across a word in the Arabic language, if you don't know if it's either one of those three things that I didn't mention yet, if you don't know which one of those three things it is, you are going to make a mistake grammatically. Okay? Because every single part has its own rules and unique features. Okay? So... Um, any word can be put in one of three buckets. So what are these three categories? Some of you answered. Ism, uh, ism, fi'l, harf. Naam, ahsantum. Okay. Aqsamul kalami thalatha. Ism, fi'l, and harf. So they're called nouns. Ism, asma. Ism is the singular. Asma is the plural. We have af'al, verbs. We have al-huruf, singular, harf. So what are nouns? Okay. The most important thing here is, dear brothers and sisters, that you have a very good understanding what a noun is, what a verb is, what a harf is, so you can differentiate between them, okay? There are other ways as well to differentiate between them, okay? Uh, which we'll cover another time, inshallah ta'ala, okay? But for now, just make sure you have a clear picture of each. So a noun, an ism, um, ism, that's the singular, asma is the plural, it's a word that names, refers to, either names or refers to a person, animal, place, thing, or abstract idea. Okay? So, uh, this category in English would include what we know what we uh, know as nouns, pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, all of these things in Arabic, they've got one name called ism. Okay? One name, ism. Okay? They all come under this category called ism. And what makes the noun different is that it names something. It gives it a name to... You know, the way... You know how languages work, right? Every object, every person has a name so that you know who I'm talking about. That name is what we call the noun. Some examples are uh, for a person, we have uh, proper nouns like Muhammad or common nouns like Mudarris. Okay? These are naming a person or they refer to a person. Places we have Beit, house, or we have Mecca, city. Okay? Or even a country, uh, Britannia. For things, things like Miftah, or kitab for animals 
قطة كلب Abstract ideas Abstract ideas basically the things that you can't touch Right Okay They're abstract Such as حار Hot Okay heat you can't touch it اليوم today It's not something you can touch From the words we've done so far in the unit There were three abstract words Ism Itself Masmuk Hal How's your, how are you? How's your state? Or jinsiya, nationality. These were the abstract words that we've done in the last unit. Okay? Taib. These are nouns. Is that well understood? These are the easy ones. Okay? Nouns are the easy ones. And they're the most abundant. They're the most abundant type of word in the Arabic language. That's why we manage to have, like, uh, they're the most abundant in terms of uh, number. Of different nouns They're not the most abundant In terms of frequency The most abundant In terms of frequency Are probably the particles Okay If you look at it On a particle by particle level Okay These particles They come They're very frequent We'll talk about particles later We have The second one is verbs Af'al Okay So fi'l Singular Af'al Plural Okay What is a fi'l Ma huwa al-fi'l A fi'l is a word That conveys An action Something happened or يعني, happened in the past or something that's happening now or will happen in the future okay so what do we learn what do we f notice here we notice that verbs always have a tense they always have a time they're automatically connected to time nouns are not connected to time you can say Khalid you can say Muhammad nobody can say to you when because there's no time connected to Khalid and Muhammad and Abdullah it's just a noun it doesn't tell you when Whereas a verb, it tells you, it gives you this information, when. And this is the main difference between the ism and the fi'l. So the fi'l has got two things, two characteristics to it. Something happened, and it happened at a specific time. Either in the past, present, or future. These are the af'al. Okay? Some examples we have for past tense. ذَهَبَ Went. Shariba Drank. Or for present tense, we have yaktubu Is writing. yushahidu Is watching. Or for future tense, we have uh, سيدرسو, will study, or سيفتحو, will open. Okay? There are other notes or other things to be said about verb, which, you know, we'll, we'll talk about later in more detail, such as uh, the fact that a noun always, ha a verb always has a noun associated with it. A verb can't exist by itself. There has to be a noun associated with it, because things don't happen by themselves. And this goes back to our aqeedah, alhamdulillah. Okay? You know, we're, we're, we don't have the uh, atheist logic, right? Where things just happen, right? Every action has a doer. So even the creation, when we look at Allah's creation, there has to be a creator. Things can't create themselves, right? So every verb has what we call a noun associated with it, which is the subject of the verb. I, it's also in Arabic, it's called the fa'id, the person who did that verb. Okay, this is really important that you know this. That the verb itself, there's a noun. So that's why we said nouns are the most abundant. Because... Not just do you have nouns as a separate category, but a verb can't exist without a noun. Okay? Um, all verbs in Arabic, likewise, they're also they're derived from a common root. Okay? Which makes it very easy to superpower your vocabulary if you know how to figure out what the root is. Okay? And then this root is conjugated to make different meanings. And likewise, uh, verbs, they might have some pronouns or particles affixed to it. Okay, so verbs, they have normally other things connected to it. Yes. Um, why? Because for the verb, we need to know who did the verb. We need to know who the verb affected, which we call object. And we also need to know the tense, right? So these sort of things are sometimes affixed to it. So the future tense, for example, we add a scene at the beginning to tell you it's in the future. Sayyidhabu. So verbs normally don't exist by themselves. They are these tiny words. You can like Legos, you can add a lot of things to it. Okay. And may basically make a whole sentence, you know. On paper, it looks like one word with all these things attached to it, right? But in practical, it could be a whole sentence. It could be a whole sentence, okay? For example, this, this word in the, in the Quran. And if, if, you mean, if you mean by word as in spaces, right? Backspace, when you add space on the keyboard, if we mean that word boundary like that. Then Allah is not a word, it's a whole sentence. Okay? Fasayakfiqahum. Okay, Fasayakfiqahum is a whole sentence. Uh Taib. So these are just some notes about verbs. Then we come on to the particles. Okay? And particles are um the words that add meaning to a verb or a noun. 
So they don't have, and this is the important thing about particles, they don't have a meaning by themselves. If I say min, hell, it doesn't have a meaning by itself, right? Fi. Rather, every particle can take on a whole set of different meanings, depending on, depending on what, which verb it's connected to, or which noun. So this is very important for you to know. So particles, generally speaking, they can't be translated, honestly. If you go to the particles used in the Quran, yes, you'll find that one particle will have 10 different meanings. And each meaning depends on the context, yes? So particles can't be translated, okay? You might be able to translate the noun and the verb, but the particle you can't, because it takes on a meaning depending on the context. And one particle can change the meaning of the verb. To give you an example, a quick example, we have the, the word raghiba, which means, well, I can't even tell you what raghiba means, because it can have a different meaning depending on the particle that connects to it. If I say raghiba fi, means he wants. Raghiba anhu means he doesn't want. So the whole verb meaning changed because of the particle that came with it. Okay? So uh, they're, 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 very, they're very powerful particles. Number one, they're extremely frequent. As in, you know, you can like learn 20 particles and they will make up like 60% of your vocabulary. Everything you come across. Right? And the most frequently used words in the Quran are particles. By far. They're also called function words in English. Function words. Words that do a specific function. And these are the words that are directly related to grammar. Like, what are some of the function words we've done so far? We've done Asma'ul Istifham. The interrogative words. They're part, they, they are, uh, even though they're nouns, right? They are, they're also considered function words for the most part. At the word to Istifham, some are nouns, some are particles. Grammatically speaking, we want to be precise. But they are function words. Then we have demonstrative pronouns, which are also Asma', but they do a specific function. So, even though function words don't have to be a particle, but generally speaking, function words, grammatical function words, they take up a big chunk of the Arabic language. So it makes sense that you focus on them because they will give you the biggest impact. Okay? Uh, so we've talked about these three things. Um, we won't go into its definition. Uh, we've, we've mentioned the definition already, actually. But to summarize it, in an ism, name someone or something, or it refers to someone or something already known. So it's naming someone is Muhammad. Referring to him is huwa. Okay? And they do not denote a particular tense. They've got no tense to it, like time. Uh, a verb conveys the, conveys the occurrence of an, an action. Something actually happened. That's what it conveys. And it does not refer to someone or something in and of itself. A verb doesn't tell you who did it by itself. If I say to you, for example, um, uh, I can't say kharaj, yeah? If I say to, for example, um, well, how do I give you a verb that doesn't have a pronoun connected to it? Oh, I can't actually because pronouns are automatically connected to the verb. But if we just would take the verb alone it by itself, say yadrusu, we just say darasa, uh, right? Darasa, yes. Um, then you know it doesn't tell you who did it by itself, okay? And it also denotes a specific tense past, present, or future. And um, particles, they do not have a meaning by themselves. Rather, they add meaning to a verb or a noun. Or sometimes they even change the meaning. Okay? So these are, if you like, the three parts of speech. Extremely important. Why do I mention it? Because right now, we've introduced the final piece of the puzzle, which is the verb. So we've had nouns before. We had particles before in unit one. Here in unit two, we came across the first verbs. Aina Ammar Ammar Yatawadda. For example, I can say it's over there in the in the in the dialogue that we did. Where's Ammar? Ammar is making wudu. Yatawadda. Okay? That's a verb which is in the present tense. Al fi'l mudari. Okay? So these are the three types of verbs. I didn't call them tenses. Why? Because they're not all tenses. You have past tense, you have present tense, future tense, we just add a scene to it. And the third one is what we call fi'l amr, the imperative uh, mood, they call it in English. It's not really a different tense. It's just that when you command someone to do something, that's a different type of verb. And why do they have these three types? Or why do they specifically mention these three types of verbs? Because you need to know which type it is in order to figure out what pronouns to attach to it or where to attach those pronouns. So the pronouns attached to fi'l madi are different in terms of the way they look than the pronouns that are attached to fi'l mudari'ah. And this is very important for you to know. Because if you can't tell 
what pronoun is attached to it or how to attach it, you cannot convey who did the action. Okay? Alright? So that's why there are these three types. Because they have different structures. Okay? We, it's not three tenses. Please don't understand. It's not that Arabic language has got three tenses when it comes to their verbs. Just the way that English has eight tenses. No. The tenses, they are past, present, future, but they are not different types of verbs. The different types of verbs, verbs that we learn in Arabic grammar are not all tenses. The first two are tenses, okay? Even mudari itself, it doesn't mean present tense, to be honest. Okay? It doesn't mean present tense. It's called fi'l mudari because it acts like a noun. Okay? So, these types of verbs, memorize them or remember them by way of their Arabic names. Fi'l madhi, that's the only one that is actually a tense or that conveys the meaning of a tense, a verb that happens in the madhi, that happened in the past. Fi'l mudari and fi'l al-amr. Remember these three words, okay? Um, so these are the verb types. Generally speaking, that's all I wanted you to know for today in terms of grammar. Of course, the exercises you're going to do are going to be related to this, inshallah, that I'm going to release to you. In terms of personal pronouns, we've done that last time, okay? But there is one thing that you need to know, which is when it comes to the attached personal pronouns, we've got two extra ones that we need to know. The who, which means his, so, so far we had ismi, my name. We had ismuka, your name. We had ismuki, your name for female. Now you can add to that ismuhu, his name. So these are the attached pronouns. Okay? Possessive for pronouns that tell you who it belongs to, who it's associated with. Ismuhu. And you can add to that as well ismuha, her name. Ismuhu and ismuha. So these two nouns we've learned as well. I know about the first one, the second, the female one, I'm not sure if it's mentioned in this particular dialogue, but it's good to know. So by way of that, we have five and five. So we have all five of them together now. We have Anna and the Ya Al-Mutakallim. Okay? We have the Anta and the Ka. The Anti and the Ki. And we have the Huwa and the Hu. And the Hiya and the Ha. So now we have the full set of personal pronouns for the singular. We haven't done the plural yet. We do that later. So far, it's all about person and gender. So we have the, for the first person, we have Anna for the subject, when, it's, when you're talking about your name and stuff, or Anna. We'll talk about subject and object and possessive. We'll talk about that later. Okay? The mubtada and the khabar and the fi'l and the fa'il. And we'll talk about that next time we talk about basic Arabic sentences. Okay? But now we have the person, first, second, third. We have Anna, Anta and Anti, Hu and He. Those are the Isolated pronouns. The attached pronouns that connect to a noun to tell you association, to give you mudaf, mudaf, ilay, they are also five. The ya al mutakalim, the e, the ka, the ki, the hu, the hu, and the ha. Okay? So when you're going to practice, inshallah, next lesson, the grammar practice, you're going to practice on how to connect these five, each five, how to connect them together. And you're also going to practice how to differentiate the different persons and the different genders, inshallah, okay? All of this, it might go above your head at this moment, but when you start practicing, inshallah, it will all make sense, okay? Uh, one final thing that I wanted to mention is the verb subject. And I've mentioned this already, actually, seconds ago, which is every verb as a subject, has a doer. Someone did that verb. We call this in Arabic, fa'il. What do we call it? We call it fa'il, the doer, the person who did the action. Okay? So remember that. Every verb has this. Right. Any questions before we end? On the isolated pronouns, you forgot the meme. No, no. There are, there's no meme in the isolated pronouns. What do you mean by the meme? Which meme? Okay, then we're gonna uh, end there. Inshallah, I'm gonna. You wrote. Nufassal. Oh, sorry. Zakallah khair. You mean uh, spelling mistake. Okay, Zakallah khair. I will correct that, inshallah. We had Damir, Mufassal, Muttasil, Munfasil, sorry, and Muttasil. Munfasil and Muttasil. Okay, I'll correct that, inshallah. Okay, we're gonna end this, inshallah, and I'm gonna send the workshop links in the Telegram groups. I'll see all of you in the workshop about five minutes from now, okay?
are there supposed to be workshops during the week? There are workshops during the week for the private mentorship students, not for the premium cohort. At least uh, no free workshops. We can arrange maybe paid ones with the teachers and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's for the private mentorship students. They have uh, private workshops during the week to help them build other skills. Okay. Type. Inshallah, I'm going to stop this uh, screen, this one and I'm going to send you the link to the workshops in the channel. If there are any questions, you can post it on the groups, inshallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa